Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of the South Campus Show. I have uh, with us as our guest, who loves Arlo, Arlo loves him, you can tell that, Father Eric Ahmad, of uh, Associate Pastor at Chan, uh, in Chanhassen, St. Hubert's, our neighbor to the east. Welcome, Eric. Thanks, Father Bob. Yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for coming. You, uh, like a busy young priest, you just got off a, um, a nursing home mass, was it? Yes, we've got the senior home right across the street from okay. St. Hubert, and okay. so we've got mass over there every Thursday. All right, very well, good. You, you alternate with uh, Father Rolf Tolleson, um, and of course, mm -hmm. unlike me, you were here. He said, I'll be here about 12.15. You got in about 12.14. Thanks for coming. <laughs> so, excellent. Um, so, Eric, you got ordained three years ago? A little over three years ago, 2018. Okay, 2018. And, um, you know, I remember we do this dinner for, uh, to welcome in the newly ordained to the mm -hmm. presbyterate, and uh, then a priest who knows the young priest well about to be ordained says a few words, and um, and it kind of went on and on, and he went, oh, oh by the way, Father Ray, bench, no, uh, deadlifts 405 pounds. I thought, oh, okay, that's, that's good. <laughs> um, we'll get back to that in a minute. But uh, good. first, um, you're from the other side of the river, I think, is that right? Uh, the, basically the opposite corner of the Twin Cities from okay. here. Yeah, I grew up in Shoreview. Uh, okay, all right. And um, is that Montville High School? Moundsview High School is where I went. So I went to St. Odelia you know, School okay. for K through eight. Okay. And then I went to Moundsview High School. Wow, wow. Was there a Moundsview High School vocations office there that you got <laughs> interested in? Seems it seems like it, because like, yeah. like, that's, the, that's the public high school in Twin Cities that seems to have the most vocations come from it. Interesting. I think, interesting. I think there's five priests to have come from that, that mm -hmm. public high school. Uh, interesting, <laughs> but how, how did you get your interest in um, uh, My interest was, it was very slow through high school. Um, and then it's like my faith got awakened through my confirmation you know, prep program, and wow. then I was confirmed at the very beginning of, it was either at the end of my sophomore year or beginning of my junior year. For some reason, I want to think it was the beginning of my junior year. Um, but then eventually, like, it's, that kind of set me off of like wanting to get live my faith more and more. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, um, we got a, a, a hip new young <clears throat> priest at our parish, uh, who you all might know, Father Nels Jengdahl. His first assignment was my home parish. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so he saw me starting to get more and more involved at mm -hmm. you know at masses and in youth group and stuff like that. And so he just asked me out of the blue one day, um, "Have you ever thought about being a priest?" And I laughed at him and said, "No." <laughs> but that was the seed, right? Mm -hmm. I could never get the thought out of my head after that. Um, but then it was on a retreat that I took just before I started my freshman year of college. Um, I was up in northern Minnesota and I was just praying on the North Shore one day. And just, just was just inspired to ask God, God, do you want me to be your priest? Wow. And I, I actually heard this quiet whisper come across my right ear that said, yes. Wow, <laughs> not so, the left, but the right. It was my right ear. Oh, I distinctly okay. remember it was my right ear. <laughs> you go the right way. That's, a, that's an amazing story. And yep. darn Father Nels for asking that question. I couldn't get out of your head, you know? Yep. But you listen to it. You listen to it. Yep. So hopefully he's doing that more at, at uh, Holy Family High School yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> and it's uh, all you uh, confirmation candidates out there listening, just remember that it started with confirmation and went mm -hmm. from there. A lot of good things can, can happen when you're young. Oh yeah. And uh, it's funny you look back and when that started, and then you look back and well, I started. I remember thinking about that when I was mm -hmm. in high school or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but, so three years at St. Hubert's, and... Um, yep, a little over three now. We hear, uh, I always remember uh, the Chill Fest, I think was your first year ordained. It was, kids were uh, yeah. ice skating, you know, on the rink, and they had an all night, all night. Yep. I think it's about four in the morning, and mm -hmm. last man standing was with Father Eric Steele skating around <laughs> <laughs> the rink, way to be here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's probably the, the latest in the night, the earliest in the morning that I've ever been ice skating. Uh, probably, yeah, which they probably, probably shut the rig down at like 2 a.m. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but tell me your duties at, at uh, St. Hubert's, what do you find yourself? Well, St. Hubert, so I've got three main jobs. One, the associate pastor, mm -hmm. right? And then I'm the liturgy coordinator. 
Um, and so I make sure all the liturgy things are happening. I organize all the volunteers for all the liturgical ministers that we have involved, and then all of our other things as well. I'm just kind of overseeing all of everything that happens in the church <laughs> itself. Wow. And then I'm also the youth minister. That's my third main job. Okay. So, so this is my second guy. go at it. Yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah, our youth minister ended up, she she was doing well, and she was doing so well that she went and joined the Handmaids okay. this past August. The Handmaids oh, wow. of the Heart of Jesus. Wow. And, and she's living up at Hopkins now okay. in her first year with them. Very good. She heard the call also. Yeah. So, um, but um, I just think of, uh, as priests, it's important, important for us to keep our balance and kind of... Mm -hmm. Keep uh, have some outlets that oh, yeah. uh, keep our sanity, if you will. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and keep us uh, fit and fiddle for the job and stuff. Like that. And you, you have an, I'm going to say not unusual, but interesting uh, outlets. Tell us a little bit about uh, your hobby, your your outlet. My, my, well, my main outlet, I was just at the gym this morning, so okay. so I do, you can, it goes by many names, weightlifting, powerlifting, strength training, yeah. um, and so resistance it's training. resistance training, the way I just describe it is I, I pick up heavy objects and put them back where I found them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> what do you think about that? Right. Move that table, there. go ahead. No, hold on. So. <laughs> Um, um, so yeah, so so I'll go to I lift at uh, at Lifetime. And I'm over in Chanhassen, um, and I'm usually, I'm usually there three days a week. And then it's it's just a really simple program of I've got um, four particular lifts that I do, mm -hmm. right? The squat and then the bench press mm -hmm. and then the overhead press um, and then the deadlift. That's it. Pretty simple. Keep it's it pretty simple. simple. And then I've got a little program on my phone you know, that, that tells me to sort of like I try to do three sets of five for these particular lifts. If I make it at that weight, the next time I go to the gym, I add five pounds wow. to that lift. Three sets of five, which is fairly healthy. Except for the deadlift. I only do yeah. one set of five for that okay. one because that one's so heavy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you were at 405. What are you at now on the deadlift? Well, I'm just coming back from retreat, and so I'm building up again. So today I did 485, mm -hmm. you know, but my, what I've gotten up to 535. Okay, that's... <laughs> I'll call it respectable. <laughs> Can you move my Volkswagen in the backyard? But I don't drive, I don't have a Volkswagen. Yeah, great. Um, mm -hmm. So, just, um, do you think down the road, like, when you get old like me, Eric, what do you, what do you see yourself, are you still going to be lifting or what? What are you going to be doing to I hope to, because um, one of the things that I discovered when I started doing this was that it's actually a great way to help control my diabetes. So okay. I have type 1 diabetes, and I've tried all sorts of workout programs to help with that control, and this, this weightlifting stuff has been the, the best um, exercise program to help me to control that. So I might not be lifting, you know, 600 pounds when, yeah. uh, when I'm your respectable age, yeah. but, you know, I still hope to be. Lifting, I see that some follow trainers online and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and they're they've still got you know folks who are 70, 80, 90 years old who are who are still doing the same sort of program. Isn't that interesting? Huh? That's great, but um, and so it's it's good for your head, good for your mm -hmm. your your spirit, and I think it's All great. Right. And you make it's funny things that are important, you make time for. It. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just so you got three times a day. Call them big rocks. You put them in the schedule right away, and they happen. Yep. And uh, guys, we're busy. I know you're busy. We're all, oh, yeah. we're all got stuff to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, time for the magic hat. The magic hat. Here, here it comes. comes. Oh, out of nowhere. There it is. Take it. Arlo. And um, see what we got. You want to read the question? Arlo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's it say, Arlo? There you go. What what would he wants to eat it. Yeah. yeah, he does. What would your advice be for a young person who is feeling a call to be the face and hands of Jesus? through a religious vocation? Right. Yes, I'm done with the question now. <laughs> <laughs> what would your advice be for a young person who is feeling a call to be the face and hands of Jesus through a religious vocation? Well, first, I would say thanks be to God that you are, that you are recognizing these, these feelings, these desires within your heart. And then I would say continue to bring that to prayer would be my first thing, right? Because any, any vocation, whether it's going to be a sort of vocation to priestly life, religious life, even marriage, right? That's, that's a call to live in some way in Jesus Christ and in the grace that he gives us. And so we want to bring that, those feelings, those desires to this, probably the source they're coming from in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. yes. And so keep praying over that question. Keep asking that question like I did, right? God, do you want me to be your priest, right? So we just bring that to prayer and just be honest with them. It's like, Jesus... 
That was even some of my prayer too. It was like, Jesus, I don't really want to be a priest, but if you want to be, be, be a priest, let me know and I'll do it. Right? And so, we've, so the, my first recommendation is keep, keep that prayer life alive and keep that question in your prayer life. And then my second recommendation would be to explore. Right? If this is the desire, then we start to look more closely at a religious vocation. Right? Come and hang out with Father Bob or myself. Um, ask us what it's like to be a priest and you know he's got more years under his belt so he might be able to have more wisdom of of what it's like to live as a priest all your life long and or else if it's a more religious life sort of style you know go and explore some communities you know like i mentioned our youth our previous youth minister joined the handmaids of the heart of jesus and so if so if you're a woman and you're feeling that call to live in a religious life go and explore go and, and and see what their life is like ask them what it's about and see if if what drew them into that life is also a reflection of what's drawing you now. Those would be my two groups, my two steps that I would recommend. Wow. <laughs> and that was right off the cuff. Eric. <laughs> you can see you live it. And uh, I like what you, you say, in Christ. Because, mm -hmm. like, I want to live my life, but no, in Christ. Mm -hmm. that, that changes everything, the landscape. You know, if it's yeah. just for me, well, what do I want to do? I don't know, you know. And, um, but in Christ, and that is the context, and, and then explore means step out of your comfort zone a little bit. That's, yep. that's what that means, and, and be open, and that's not always easy. But uh, mm -hmm. obviously, you, it's something you've lived in your life, you explore mm -hmm. in Christ, and uh, here's where you are right now. I, it's, it's, yep. Eric, I want to thank you for coming in, and the good work you do at St. Hubert's, as always. Master service. Say hi to that pastor of yours. He's a good man. Will do. <laughs> yeah. And uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Until next week, or when we meet again, take care. God bless. Thanks for, for being with us.